Welcome to part three of my snuff tutorial for piano. In this lesson we'll be working on the small section that links the first verse which we covered last lesson and the chorus which will be next lesson. So let's go. Right, so as usual what we're going to do is recap what we did last lesson and then lead straight into this little link section that is the main focus of today's lesson. So that's more or less the result we're aiming for. And as usual, we need to slow it down and we're going to take each hand separately. So starting with the right hand. One thing I'd like to point out before we break it down for the right hand is that the rhythms and the chords and the notes are very similar to what we've already done in the previous lessons. So uh, if you've been working on those, then a lot of the hard work's pretty much been done and you shouldn't have a problem with this little link section here at all. The first chord is exactly the same as the introduction. We've got the F sharp and the A together as a third here. And then moving down to the C sharp. And then moving up, G sharp and the B together as a third. Again, C sharp. And then moving up once more, the A and the C sharp as a third and then moving down to the C sharp again. So it helps if you have your thumb in the same position all the time, just move your fingers up the uh, thirds. Okay, for the last beat of this bar, uh, the rhythm's a little bit quicker. So we're going to have the A and the C sharp going up to the B and the D again as thirds. So bar number two of this little link section starts off uh, again on the third, A and the C sharp, going down to the D, and then single note A on its own, and then followed by this little series of thirds that uh, might be tricky, but what will help is if you leave your hand in the same position, you can get your fingers around all of the notes and the thirds, uh, like so. So you've got the G sharp and the B as a third down to the F sharp and the A as a third, back up to the G sharp and the B as a third, up to the A and the C sharp as a third, and then down to the G sharp and the B as a third. It might sound confusing but if I tie it all together nice and slow you'll be able to see it makes more sense. the fourth beat of the bar, the last beat, we're going to have two more thirds, F sharp and the A, and the E and the G sharp. So for the right hand for bar number two of the link section, nice and slow, should sound like this. Bar number three for the link section is pretty much the same as bar one. Um, all we do is go a little bit higher for the last beat on some of the thirds. So first three beats exactly the same as the first bar. And instead of having the A and the C sharp and the B and the D as thirds, we start on the B and the D and then go up to the C sharp and the E. So the whole thing together. third bar. Okay, now what's left is bar number four of this little link section, which is the last bar. Again, starts on thirds, so B and D, then A and C sharp, play this twice. And 
then G sharp and B, down to the F sharp and the A, and then up to the G sharp and B again. So from the beginning of bar 4, and then the last part of this bar is when the, uh, the main vocal melody for the chorus comes in, and we can play this on the single note, which is the C sharp. Um, the best thing to do for this would be to follow the rhythm in the actual song. Um, it will give you a better idea. We'll play it with the metronome in a moment, but uh, just for now, we've got the C sharp here to do the vocal melody. So complete, bar number four. Okay, just as a side note for the entire song, the original is about 60 BPM, about 60 beats per minute. Now, I prefer to play the piano version at that speed. Um, you know, obviously it resembles the original more closely. Um, it flows nicely at that tempo, and uh, in some ways it actually helps to keep the rhythms together because the song flows nicely. Uh, with that said, you might want to play it slower, you might want to play it faster, that's entirely up to you. I'm just giving you my personal opinion. Now what we're going to do for the link section here is these four bars we're going to go through for the entire right hand and we're going to slow it down first of all, we're going to start about 40 BPM just to uh, break things down a bit more. Okay, we're going to set the tempo now at 40 BPM on the metronome. Now just remember, no matter what instrument you're learning, the metronome will be your best friend. If you're having trouble playing something faster, then set the tempo lower and work up from there. I guarantee you some good results from that. Uh, obviously you have to work up gradually though, you can't just shoot up from a slow to a fast tempo, it really works. And also we've got all the joys of the digital age, uh, digital metronomes, uh, phone applications, this one's on my phone, uh, goes all the way up to 300 BPM so uh, you know there's nothing wrong with those analog clock metronomes, I've got one, one with a ticking arm, there's not a problem with those, they do just as good a job uh, but I like to be able to carry a metronome around with me and be able to plug in my headphones and listen to it closely. So uh, 40 BPM, it's going to sound pretty slow but it's definitely going to help us out. Okay, so the left hand. For all four bars of the link section, the notes for the left hand are actually quite easy to play. And what makes it a little bit trickier is the rhythms. But when you place it together with the right hand, it actually makes the rhythms seem easier on the left hand because they, uh, they work well together. You'll see this in a moment when we play the left hand and the right hand at the same time. But for now, we're going to break down just the left hand. Right, all your left hand needs to do for the uh, link section is be able to play octaves on the F sharp, the E the D. So there's an octave, the little finger on the F sharp here and the thumb on the F sharp here. Same for the E and the D. Okay, what I'm going to do for the left hand rhythm to help demonstrate this is on the metronome I've set it to eighth notes. So for every beat there's actually going to be two clicks and this will help us figure out the rhythm a lot easier. It's the same speed, it just sounds faster but there's two beats or two clicks now for every beat of the bar. Now hopefully what you've realised from that is that the left hand octaves get split up to play different rhythms and when you play it with the right hand you'll see in a moment that they, uh, they fit in on the offbeat against the, uh, the rhythm of the right hand, so have a look. OK, 
Okay, I just want to emphasize these rhythms a little bit further, so we're going to work on each bar separately uh, in regards specifically to the rhythms. Okay, so uh, obviously we start on the beat for the first chord. And then the offbeat note comes in on the lower F sharp. play these two uh, notes, rhythms, whatever, at the same time together. So once more. And again. probably notice that these offbeat rhythms with the left hand um, they're quite prominent in the whole song and we had them at the intro we've had them in the first verse and we've got them now in this little link section and as you probably guessed they're in the rest of the song um, especially the choruses uh, you'll need these offbeat rhythms quite a lot so if you can work on these and practice them up to a good standard and get them working well with the right hand then it will definitely do you a favor when you're learning the rest of the song Okay, bar number two for the left hand rhythms, pretty much the same as bar one, except the last beat will be slightly different as you'll see. So we're starting on the D octave here, and we've got the same offbeat rhythm again. So the lower D now comes in between the notes. And then it goes back up to the higher D along with the A on the right hand. Bar number three for this link section, the rhythms are 100% identical to the bar number one, which we covered some moments ago. So, check it out. And again. And once more. Bar number four for the left hand in the link section. We're hardly doing anything at all. It's just the D octave, which is split again to give the same offbeat rhythm. And that's just held through to the end of the bar, uh, which point the, uh, the chorus kicks in, which will be the focal point of the next lesson. So when we mix this nice and slow with the right hand, So that pretty much covers the technical aspect of the link section. All that's left really is for you to go away and practice that. Uh, remember to work slowly, uh, both hands separately. I'd recommend about 40 BPM initially. If that works out a little bit tricky for you or too fast, then you know feel free to knock it back a few BPM, five or 10, uh, whatever works for you. But ultimately we're aiming for roughly 60 BPM, which is the uh, speed of the original, which is what we're gonna do now. So I'm gonna set my trusty metronome at uh, 60 BPM and work through the link section for the last time this lesson. So as you can tell, that leads straight into the chorus, which is the main bulk of the song. Now from the intro up to this point, it's been fairly similar chords and fairly similar notes and rhythms. Um, we're still going to be using those later in the song, but uh, the chorus does change things quite a bit. We've got the vocal melody to deal with. We've got some new chords, uh, some different rhythms as well, so there's going to be plenty to look forward to and lots to work on. So thanks a lot for watching, and I'll see you next time.